Hello, I'm Philip Stoughton. I'm here at Electronica 2012 and I'm joined by Pascal Fernandez from Avnet. Pascal, thanks very much for joining me. Uh, watch with interest your presentation. You were talking about a control tower and I heard uh, Douglas Kent speak about it a little bit earlier in the day. Help me understand what it is and, and what one can tangibly touch and feel around the control tower concept. Well, the control tower concept, which is, uh, first, thank you for having me on the, on the show today. Uh, the, the control tower concept is really driven by the, uh, the driving forces of our ecosystem. And our ecosystem is really um, today subject to the, some very strong forces, uh, volatility on one side, volatility in demand, volatility in supply, and volatility of the whole environment. Uh, you have also uh, an increased complexity. Most of our customers have uh, outsourced to different geographies, to different entities, so they move from a very, being a very uh, concentrated supply chain to a very uh, stretched supply chain right. across many geographies, across many partners. And, uh, and in doing that, um, the whole industry is also driven by uh, a big need for increased velocity along the way. So those things are, are, are driving uh, a lot of companies to, um, to increase the command and control around the supply chain and in order to do that they need to build mechanism to better sense and respond to mm. the event going across the supply chain. So control tower is about building visibility across the, the supply chain mm -hmm. uh, from uh, not only from customers, suppliers and the company in the middle but to tier two, tier three suppliers, tier two and tier three customers so people have an end-to-end -end visibility on the problem that may occur across, uh, across um, the supply chain. And, uh, and control tower is building visibility, is uh, sensing sensing those events along the way, and actually helping and enabling people to take decisions okay. and uh, and, uh, and act on those on those events. So okay. Okay. And if I'm a say I'm a contract manufacturer based here in yeah. Germany, I listen to everything you say and say, Pascal, the control tower is for me. It makes perfect sense. How does Avnet help me? implement that? How do, what's, the, what's the relationship there? That, that's a great question. I mean, uh, Control Tower is not just a piece of software. Mm -hmm. Control Tower is a combination of process, of uh, people, mm -hmm. and technology should be, should be last. So the first thing to do to approach a Control Tower scenario is to uh, look at your network and redesign your network. So uh, supply chain net, this network design is really the first step companies take to approach Control Tower. Mm -hmm. Once you re-establish the process and you want to redesign your supply chain the way it should be operated, then Control Tower is the enabler for the different people to communicate on this right. network. Okay, and you know, my, my supply chain team, for example, might have a very have their own ideas of how the supply chains run and have run it for some time, you know, pre-Fukushima, pre, -Fukushima, pre uh, the Thailand floods, pre all those risks and all those changes in the market. If I want uh, your assistance to kind of change that mindset, do, do, you have, do you have some offerings there? Do you have some people that can support my team as an Avnet customer but, uh, in developing a, a better supply chain network and using this system? It, it's really key, you know. Um, I'm a strong believer that supply chain and supply chain efficiency is really a combination of systems and people. Mm. And uh, you know, if you just automate supply chain, then you're going to end up with mountains of inventory mm. or mountains of problems anyway. Uh, so you really rely on very slick people. So uh, you know, everybody's talking about T-shaped people and uh, having the, the, the right profile of people who not only are specialized in their field, but understand the, right. the complete picture and understand the, the challenges in the, in the people they interact with. So, Beyond helping companies redesign the network, we will also be assisting them in training their own team right. to embrace to embrace the process. This is absolutely key. I yeah. mean, the, the way and the, the way people are going to operate in the model is going to make the difference between a successful and non-successful implementation. Okay, and the the supply chains seem to get ever more complex, ever more uh, more dynamic scale on them. And, and you know, I mentioned earlier risk and risk mitigation as being part of it, and this is a protection about that. Why do you think the supply chain does? continue to get more complex? Well, you know, supply chain in our, in our world, there's, a, there's two, two opposite driving forces. You have on, on one end a very rigid supply side, mm -hmm. and whatever you do, it takes between 16 to 20 weeks to manufacture a semiconductor mm -hmm. from start to finish. So very rigid supply side and a very volatile demand side. Right. So any, any change in the demand is going to have a, this uh, famous bullwhip effect mm -hmm. been described in the 60s yeah. uh, that's going to affect all the players along the way. And um, the only way to address this bullwhip effect and to mitigate the impact of the bullwhip effect is to work on two things. First, in reducing lead time, mm 
Mm -hmm. uh, and when reducing lease time is by positioning inventory, by mm -hmm. uh, double sourcing, by doing things like that along the chain. And the second thing is um, increase the delay in information. Right. So, so people have a better grip on the information, reducing the lead time, and that's how you reduce the effect of, yeah. the, of this thing. Yeah. Uh, this is why our, our supply chain are so complex, is that uh, people have been stretched out many yeah. geographies, they've gone to massive outsourcing, mm -hmm. and, um, <coughs> and with those, uh, those driving forces, it makes their life yeah. relatively complex. Yeah, and that, that, that inventory issue, I think, is absolutely key, because I think we were in little doubt that the, the Tech Record 2000 was massively amplified by poor information in terms of inventory and, and inventory sure. overhang. So controlling that is key. So I, I guess, you know, in summary, what we've got is a, a um, consumer end that's moving faster and faster and faster, shorter market windows, more yep. and more volatility with the market as well. And, uh, you know, our back end in terms of the se semiconductor industry, which, as you say, remains quite rigid in terms of its its lead times and the speed it can ramp. You know, it's a fascinating industry because when you think about it, over the past 40 years, they've all been living on the promise of the Moore's law, which is, I'm going to double my performance mm. every every other year on the same uh, <coughs> size of silicon. Yep. And, they've, and they've made that promise over the past mm. 40 years. So the, the, the semiconductor industry has gone some, through some fantastic revolution in terms of technology, but it remains a very long process, mm. and, uh, and the process is even more complex than it was before. So. Uh, you cannot reduce that. Whatever you do, if you put 16 factories in parallel, you're not going to reduce that to one mm. week. You know, it's a, it's really a serial process, which which is really one of the nightmares of the OEM operating yeah. this ecosystem. Because if you're if you're a big consumer guy, then you may get a lot of a, uh, a lot of focus from those guys. Mm. But for the majority of the hundred thousand customers we, we deal with, you know, they they're desperate to get some flexibility yeah. and to get some uh, lead time uh, uh, management support uh, yeah. along the chain. Okay, and Pascal. It seems with the control tower, you've <coughs> you've hit the nail on the head that to resolve the problem, you have to see the problem, and this is really about seeing the problem. It, it's absolutely that. It's absolutely that, and it's really beyond. It's beyond um, inventory management along mm. the chain. It's really around risk ma management and risk mitigation. Yeah, and and visibility in a dashboard style where you've got a lot of information available at one point, which which people are. are are starting to get much more used to being able to see and, and manage data in that way. That's so exactly the idea. That helps. Pascal, fantastic to chat. I enjoyed your presentation immensely. Thank you. Thanks for stopping by and we can talk again soon. Thank it you. It was a pleasure. To get you here quickly, you should start from here and let us take care of everything in between. Flextronics SBS. Innovative Manufacturing Services.